Okay, welcome to part three of Disclosure 2021 from the People's Lawyer. And we're going to look at your remedy in law, or at law is the um, perfectly correct expression. I've identified five remedies against systemic narcissism. Although I said before that the system is not your enemy, there is a, nars a streak of narcissism running through it that is something that we need to be conscious of so that we adopt effective defensive strategies. And these are the five remedies that I've identified. Do not contract with them. And we've been looking in the previous clip, we've been looking at not giving them joinder and not falling for the trap or the trick of silent acquiescence. So do not contract with them. They need you to contract with them. The Clearfield Doctrine, they're running corporate policy, corporate principle, guidelines, whatever you want, offering you terms and conditions, but do not give them joinder, do not give them contract. Remain above them at true law. Remain above their rules and policies. Remember, their rules and policies come and go, but guess what? You're eternal. How can an eternal being, having a spiritual experience in a physical body, is this woo-woo for some? Not for me, it's not. Having a spiritual experience in a physical body, or a spiritual... <laughs> How can their temporal or temporary or random, non-consensual, dictatorial policies be anything to do with us? Number three, remedy number three, use the power of the question. He or she who asks the last question is king, as king, asking. You maintain your sovereignty by being the la last, the owner, as king, the owner of the last question. Your shield is verbal here. The power of the word. First line of the Bible, there we go again. In the beginning was the word. It could have said in the beginning was the question, like, oh, what am I doing here? What's going on? But the questioner has all the power. If you answer the question, as we've seen by, in the section on joinder, you give away your power. Don't answer questions. Fourth remedy, go private. We'll be looking in depth at these different remedies. Go private. Their commercial, statutory, fictitious, paperwork world is public. It applies to all legal persons. But not to a private man, woman, boy, girl. Or property held in trust, which is also one way of taking what they consider to be their property, legally possessed by them, into another realm, into the realm of equity and trust, which is a higher realm. And we will have a screen that shows you how that works. And finally, and we've been hinting at this all along, know who you are. If you do not know who you are, you are at a massive disadvantage and vulnerable to attack. <coughs> And you won't even begin to know how to defend yourself. Okay, remedy at law number one, no contract. Within 72 hours, return the windowed envelope to sender. I was given a PCN on my windscreen in London about five weeks ago. Took it out gently and calmly. As you do. Didn't swear. Honest. Wrote on it, took it to the post office, wrote on it, I'll show you what I wrote on it in a few more screens, but essentially, cancelled it, because the way you cancel an offer, it's, it's going back to the times when we had swords. So you pull the sword out from your, because someone, some kind gentleman has knocked on your door and says, I offer to rape your wife and abduct your children. Well, that's not an offer that should be accepted. So you take your sword and you're drawing an arc in the air. It's, it's bottom left to top right. Do that twice in blue at a 45 degree angle. You've cancelled the offer. 
And then there are things to write on it as well, which we'll look at in a few more screens. That has to be done within 72 hours as part of a return to sender. If you're outside of 72 hours, and most of us, we're leading, we're leading such hectic, chaotic lives, we try, we try to make them coherent, but there are certain outside forces that are making that difficult. And 72 hours can go past, that's just three sleeps. Sometimes it takes five sleeps to work out that you've had a letter in the first place. <laughs> or even more, if you've been away on holiday, trying to escape it all. Um, outside of 72 hours, use conditional acceptance, or date and or and so not and or and top and tail the conditional acceptance with data subject access request. That would take me five hours to go through just that. So if you want to know more, I suggest look into the website www.peopleslawuk.com and have a look at what's on the course and consider doing it. It's not the only course in town. There are other courses now shooting up. And there's plenty of potential students, so I'm not pushing this hard. I'm just saying it's one way of getting to know all about this kind of thing. Remedy of law number two. Remain above their rules and policies. So how do you remain above their rules and policies? Hmm. Quite simple, really. By obeying the one and only true law. There's only one law. Common law has got four offshoots of it. But the one and only true divine, natural, universal law, be harmless. Don't do any harm. And in particular, don't do any self-harm. Be self-harmless. Which, because we are far more self-harmless than harmful to others, sorry, we are far more self-harmful than harmful to others, self-harmlessness is actually way more important. Remaining harmless, or even better, self-harmless, means no one is above you at law, because you're obeying the one true law, which means you're maintaining your divine integrity, which means that you've got God on your side. A very useful and very handy teammate. Number two, you retain your innate mastery. Some people say to me in the talk, mastery, what's that? So there's the question, what is mastery and where does it come from? It comes simply from being born alive or living. You have to be a master of existence to squeeze a huge soul and spirit into a tiny little fetal body for it then to flourish in this physical plane with its God code, divine coding, intact. And the scientists, bless them, have found the God code in our DNA. Well, they think they have. Maybe they have, I don't know. But they say they have. They found coding that, suggests, that spells out in ancient Aramaic, I think, maybe ancient Hebrew, the word God. That's your mastery. You're born with it. Everyone is a master. End of. So there's your second status. So you've got beneficiary of the trust funds created when you were born. And now you're a master of existence. As a man or woman, master, government or corporate agents are actually below you. Of course they're below you. They're below you anyway. Even if you were just a man or woman, they'd be below you. But as a master, goodness gracious, they're nowhere to be seen. They are your servants. Masters have servants. If you want to know the power of the master, then I have an anecdote. Again, it's a bit of an urban legend, but a martial arts practitioner was in court charged allegedly with some kind of speeding offence and the court clerk said could we have your name please he said ah oh, yes i am master lu <laughs> case collapse we cannot hear evidence against masters here you're free to go please go if you're operating your mr mrs Ms. miss title which is attached to the legal person, they, they are administering that trust. And they do have administrative authority to hear a case against that trust that involves that trust. 
But if it's a master who's a real sovereign entity, that's way above an administrative court. These are not courts of law, by the way. A court of law is convened by a convener with a jury of your peers. Magistrates' courts, county courts, most criminal courts are administrative courts, courts of commerce, basically banking, banking, casinos, where they allow one in ten to win, nine in ten get busted. They're not courts of law. Look in Halsbury's Laws of England, you'll find that they are not lawful. Corporate agents are also below you in their commercial capacity as service provider and your capacity as customer. What do they say about the customer? Always right. So now you've got, these capacities are amassing. Beneficiary of the trust fund created when you were born. Evidenced by your birth certificate. Master, evidenced by the fact that you're alive. You've mastered the art of incarnation. How people can feel that they, they're not good at anything when they've squeezed a soul into a body and animated it. No, not got any real skills. I think I better just sign on. It's, but that's the trick that the system has played on us via its agents. Customer always right. So there's so beneficiary, who is of value. Master, who in effect is above there, who is part of divine law, master of existence, so you could say is law, and customer, never wrong, always right. There you go, so you are either their master or their customer. So if you go into a shop and they're asking you to put a mask on, in what capacity are they asking you, what's your capacity that they're referring to? If you're a customer, you just say, do you realise I'm a customer? I can't be wrong. <laughs> Do you not realise I'm a master and what I say goes? And I say, I know where mask. There's the control board. Master is law, customer is always right, beneficiary is value and never pays. So somewhere along the line we've forgotten that we are masters. We've forgotten that we are always right, and we've forgotten that we shouldn't be paying for anything. We have the natural right to everything on the planet as long as we're not causing harm. If we are harmless, we can do what we want. Now the Satanists miss out the first part of that phrase. They say, do as you please. They don't talk about harmlessness. But the people on the good side of the fence, if you like, the freedom side, the non-coercive side, the human side, say we are operating divine principle, as long as we are harmless, stroke self-harmless, we do as we please. We do, not we can do, we do as we please. So where is the obligation to do any of the following? Where is it? Answer questions, take tests, take an injection, wear a mask. Where's the obligation? There's no obligation on the beneficiary, master or customer. Where, where is it? Oh, it must be on the person. But we're not the person. <laughs> Thank heavens for that. When I went on the Manchester Metrolink, what, in the early days of you know what, it said all persons boarding Manchester Metrolink must wear a face covering. And I just breathed a sigh of relief. And another anecdote that I'll throw in as a bonus. I got on, this was six months ago, nine months maybe, I got on. Again, the same Metrolink in Manchester. Other Metrolinks are available. And I'm sitting there minding, normally I'm sitting there minding everyone else's business, but it happened just to have that minding my own. Looking through the window, staring, contemplate 
effectively into space. Meanwhile, a yellow vest gets on. Now, in France, they're heroes. What's the matter with Britain? Our yellow vests are villains most of the time. So sh she sidles up to me. She goes, no mask. And I was very tempted to go, no bra. <laughs> well, they're equally relevant questions, aren't they? What I choose to wear on my face is as a f every bit as much a free choice as whether she puts a bra on or not. Anyway, so I just turned to her, smiled, I think I smiled, I can't remember, I don't know if I was in a good mood. Smiled, said nothing, three or four seconds went by and continued to stare out of the window. Did not engage in the slightest. After about three or four seconds, where she's weighing up her options, she just goes, Oh, how rude. <laughs> so it was rude of, it was not rude of her to stick her head in my face and ask me why I'm dressed the way I'm dressed, but it was rude of me to say nothing. So there you go, inaction, polite, silent, Self-assertion, harmless action, it dispels the energy, it disperses the energy. You don't justify, you don't engage. So this is a form of, in another clip, it calls no contact. It's not no contract. Well, it was both. I didn't answer her question, so I wasn't giving her joinder. And I didn't engage on any level, so I wasn't con giving contact to the narcissist or the narcissistic beast representative. She may well be a very nice woman, but she's representing something very ugly and very nasty. Very. Fill out a form. Another story about filling out forms. I was running a company that, um, that I was using to get into school so that I could teach a game that was relevant to boys and girls lives, they were loving it, and it was going too well so the authorities defunded me. As a result of that, my income stream dipped and levelled out to pretty much zero. No, it was zero. And so I couldn't afford to fill out any forms and send them. I couldn't even afford the postage. So the Inland Revenue said, you've not filled out your annual tax return. Naughty boy, £100 fine. A month later, you've still not filled it out. £200. Another month after that, you've still not filled £1,000. They've, they've got to get this message across to me. In the meantime, I'm doing a bit of research. And I understand now what going private means. We'll come to that in a minute. And I just wrote to them a very basic letter. It was very Neanderthal, really. Because I, I didn't know then what I know now, but I knew enough. And I just said, excuse me, but I've gone private. Because I knew that limited companies were public. They're, own, they're artificial. You've registered them. They're in the public domain. But I just said, companies dissolve. I'm now working as a man. Thank you very much. They wrote back, and I've got, I've got laminated evidence of this, they wrote back cancelling all the penalties and I haven't heard since, and that was seven years ago. Well, it, it just shows that once you do a bit of research, you realise that you are the master, the boss, the beneficiary, the customer, and they need your consent. Taxation is contractual. It's that everything is contractual. Isn't marriage contractual? But so many people seem to walk down the aisle as if there's a gun pointed to their head. And sometimes there actually is, isn't there? <laughs> Close your business. Pay taxes and fines. Assist police with inquiries. No obligation. They're just doing a bit of business. Fishing. With either a PH or an F depending on whether they're taking the piss. <laughs> Remember, no signature equals no express contract. No signature, no contract. End of. No joinder and no acquiescence, or no silent acquiescence, means no implied contract. And also remember, no contract means no obligation. 
I would perfectly comprehend, I used to say understand, but I can't use that word now, perfectly comprehend that this would all seem a bit too simple and a bit too easy. Well, maybe it is, maybe it does seem that way, but remember that the devil is in the detail. The beast machine, the narcissist, has intimated that for a complex problem, you need a complex solution. But the problem was never complex. It was simply not knowing what you didn't know. Remedy at law number three, use the power of the question as king. As queen doesn't quite work, does it? As king. Verbally, orally, we've looked at this, we're just reiterating now. If you're asked a question, you answer it with a question. Am I obliged to answer that question? Who do you think you are answering, asking that question? Or in certain estates on Manchester, who the f do you think you are? But it's still a question. Yeah, so these sink estates are full of people who incidentally know the right thing to do. And we, in our posh little houses, think that we know more than they do. <coughs> Gypsies know more about the law than we do. Travellers. It's the educated middle classes that, are, that have got the most catching up to do. Let me tell you, because that's where I come from. Well, I was prior to, you know, it was a simple working class background, but I became thoroughly middle class, mixing with all the lawyers, doctors, dentists when I went to uni. And all those people now, they wouldn't have a clue. There was a lawyer at one of the talk, recent talks, he was in a field, that gives you an idea how corporate it was. It was in a field, 400 people there. So I talked on a Saturday, I think, and he was in the audience. And then on the Sunday, he talked, and this is a 40-year corporate lawyer, he's been a corporate lawyer for 40 years, and he actually made a point of saying, remember David's talk yesterday? He said, look, I'm a lawyer, 40 years experience. I knew 1% of what David was talking about. 1%. He's a, he's a, sounds like a typical NASA statistic, doesn't it? In writing, use conditional acceptance and data subject access request. Data subject access request is a letter that you can write in a, as a protocol that adheres to general data protection regulation, GDPR, and brings you within, within Data Protection Act 2018. If you're watching this, Outside of the UK, you do have your own privacy legislation. Australia has privacy legislation. The US has the US Constitution. And you may have state regulations that do help promote and preserve individual privacy. And, they can, and if you do, then dishonest, inappropriate, non-transparent responses to your conditional questions, your questions, where you're, you're saying, yes, happy to comply, provided that you can prove 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If, if those answers are dishonest, you can have them criminalised. Now, that was then, but now in this war against humanity, they've captured all the institutions, including the Information Commissioner's Office. But in theory, you can have their non-cooperative answers criminalised. You can threaten them, at least. If you don't answer these questions in a lawful way, then I'm going to give you one more chance, uh, otherwise we're off to the Information Commissioner's Office. And that's a very easy report to file. More details again on, this, on the course that I run. Fourth remedy, it'll all go private. <clears throat> Here's your return to sender. So you've got the two diagonal lines in blue across the envelope, striking it through, otherwise the post office will just send it back to you. You put return for cause again in blue and again at 45 degree angle, return for cause without dishonouring commerce. It's returned for cause because you know it's mail fraud. And it's returned without dishonouring commerce because you've done it within 72 hours. No lawful consent, no legal contract, offer to contract, declined. Again, this formula is on already on a video online, but if you watch this, then you'll get it again.
protect your home with a private by appointment only notice. Particularly, I'm, 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 I'm going to address in particular mums and dads who have or intend to, who have already pulled their boys and girls out of school or intend to do that and are worried about the knock on the door. Fret ye no more. Just put your privacy notice up. That's your law as the master, the owner of your home. That's your law. Private by appointment only. If they knock on the door, that's already their first trespass. If they knock on the door, yes, can I help you? Don't open the door. From behind closed door, can I help you? Yes, we'd like to come and see you about um, child protection issues and education of your whatever. Oh, um, interesting. Have you got an appointment? Uh, no. We're just from social services. We're a bit concerned. Well, you don't seem to have an appointment. Can you see that notice? Oh, yeah, that one. Private by appointment only. Well, would you like an appointment? Well, yes, because we need to speak to you. Well, if you would like an appointment, it will cost you a prepayment of £25,000. <laughs> Payable in advance through PayPal, and if you look closely, you'll see the PayPal address. It's my email address. They're doing business. They're not there for the interests of the boy or girl, because the boy or girl is with their mum and dad. And no one is alleging child cruelty or abuse, satanic ritual abuse. It's simply administrative commercial procedure. They are looking after their assets because they regard the young person as registered child property. So they're just supervising their assets, checking their assets. But you transcend that in commerce by offering to comply but on, upon prepayment. They're already in cash strapped enough, you won't see them again. <laughs> and that's what you do with anyone that visits your house. They have no right to visit you at home. None. Unless you've defaulted on your mortgage, defaulted on your landlord's payments, or there's evidence of a gas leak, and they've all got a warrant. So that answers one of the questions in part one. Protect your business. Private members only. So if we go into another tier 352 lockdown, people with freedom as their priority are going to have to do their own thing. But if they do it in the public, they're vulnerable. They'll be operating registered names and registered companies and do it in the private. How do you think the elite can have their whatever they do behind closed doors and never get arrested. How do you think they never pay tax? Because they know that tax is contractual. So they don't contract. Private members, PMAs they call them in the States, private members associations. Private members associations are guaranteed to allow people to continue their normal activity behind a closed door. So even if it's a bit of a faff, if you're running a hairdressing shop or any kind of public service, you shut the door, lock it, private members only, by appointment only. Well, hairdressing is by appointment only anyway, so where's the faff? So that's one problem solved, isn't it? And lots of other businesses, if it means that humanity survives kind of as we know it, and doesn't go under the beast steamroller. That's what we need to do. Oh, but it's so scary. They threaten this and they threaten that. But they can threaten all they like. None of their so-called fines are lawful. You have to go to court to be fined. And if you don't consent or contract with their paperwork, how are they going to get you to court? I'm allegedly required, and we know what required means now, to attend a court hearing based on some you-know-what activity back in the day. But they sent me a notice. Well, they actually have three police officers, not constables, uh, attend my address, not my home, my address, two different things, 
with a note with a piece of paper that said notice of criminal charge. What do we know about notices? They are offers to contract. So I've simply said I've have simply sent back a notice of conditional acceptance of the notice of criminal charge. If it were a criminal charge, they would delete the word notice and just put criminal charge. So now you know it's a commercial offer. It's an offer in commerce. And I'm saying, if you want me in court, £25,000 for my appearance. We have to... Why are barristers so expensive? Because the, they know their value. It's not that barristering is any more valuable than greengrocering. It's just that barristers know, because they've been to the elite schools and they're taught of their true value. Charge like a barrister. If you get falsely imprisoned because you're, a, a, you're doing a you-know-what, you-know-where out there, and you know who come and lift you, then you won't have committed a crime, the crime would have been committed by the police, and you are therefore entitled to £3,000 an hour compensation for false imprisonment. If you're vulnerable, it's £1,000 a minute, and it says it on the back of the protection card. I digress. Right, after protecting yourself, your boys and girls and your home, and your integrity by not opening mail and becoming a criminal, in effect, or civil offence, I should say. Use trusts and trust law. So this would be declare a trust. The highest, the most powerful thing a man, woman, master, sovereign can do is make a declaration. Not an affidavit, that's in commerce. A declaration. So a declaration of trust over your prized asset, like a car or a home, will do the job. It's a bit more intricate than that. You've got to find someone who you trust. You've got to find, if it's a vehicle, you need to file it with DVLA. It's a bit involved. We're looking into this. There's a lot of people looking into protecting assets through trusts. A lot of us are onto this. I'm not particularly worried about it in the past because I didn't have any asset to protect. My most valuable asset was a blender. <laughs> Beginning to change a bit now, but uh, so I am going to take trust a bit more seriously. I don't even use the blender much anyway now, so looking around for a prized asset. Number five, know who you are. Status correction, question mark. Right, here we are. So this is a summary. In law or at law, your true status, your high status under natural divine law is as master. Under equity and trust, which is the highest law below divine law, the highest law created and applied to man is equity and trust law. That's where you're the beneficiary. Below that, common law, law of the soil. So you have divine, natural divine ether, equity and trust air. I was going to put this on the table, but I thought it would squeeze the screen a bit. Yeah, it would um, crowd the screen a bit, so I thought I would just recite it. Common law, soil, earth. Commercial, sea, water. That's where you're the customer. Or credit, creditor, data. Statutory, the lowest of the low. Non-existent. So it's neither ether, air, soil or water. It's non-existent. Statutory is nothing. That's why you don't want to be the person. You can use the person's name for trading purposes or for, to gain benefits, but don't be the person and don't own the person's name. Remember that once you know who you are, your status is in effect corrected. And then it's simply knowing how to stand under that correction, stand by that correction, which normally is simply a question of self-belief. One guy came up to me recently after a talk, he said, David, this talk has saved me 300 letters. I was just about to write about 300 letters. Now I know I don't have to write a single one of them. Thank you very much.